Welcome to Knowledge 7 Westward Expansion. Today we're on lesson number six, and we're going to be learning about uh, the Westward on the Oregon Trail. Before we get into our read aloud today, let's go through our vocab words. I will read the word. You repeat it after me. Sights. Voyage. Transport. Create, encountered. Today we are going to be learning about uh, what people did on the Oregon Trail. We're going to kind of go back and revisit our first read aloud uh, in a way. We're going to continue learning about well, how about this difficult journey and some of the different things that settlers. Uh, went through when they were going out west on the Oregon Trail. Remember, uh, the Oregon Trail started here in Independence, Missouri, and went out west, traveled many, many miles, took many months um, till they arrived in Oregon. Now, we learned uh, yesterday, we learned about the Trail of Tears. Remember, it was uh, Indians being relocated. Terrible part of our history. Something that should never be repeated again, but here was their journey where they encountered a bad storm. Lots of people just couldn't make it because the government didn't give them enough supplies. And they moved out to here into the what was called the Indian Territory. What were some adjectives we could use to describe that journey? Yeah, terrible, horrible, suffering, yes. Today we're going to be learning about the Oregon Trail. Now, uh, this was kind of a map of what the Oregon Trail was like. Again, started in Independence, Missouri here. And it went through in this uh, in this map, it kind of shows some different uh, landmarks or different sites that uh, the settlers would see so that they knew they were on track. Now, so many people traveled these routes that there were actually wagon ruts, which were kind of like the tracks that were left by wagons um, left behind. So... Again, lots of people traveled uh, this route. After today's read aloud, you should be able to identify the main topic. What's the one sentence that you could use to describe this whole read aloud? And then show an understanding of the word territory. The wagon trail, or sorry, the wagon train was moving westward along the Oregon Trail. The families walked beside or rode in large covered wagons pulled by oxen. Each family had only one wagon, but that wagon was able to hold almost everything the family owned. What kinds of things do you think the families would bring along with them? Do you remember the kinds of things that the Morgans took when they were going out west? Each family packed food, Things like flour, potatoes, and beans. They took clothes, blankets, soap, candles, furniture, pots, and pans. China, which are like plates and stuff, or glass, and rifles. They even had to take barrels of water with them because they weren't sure where they might find clean water along the way. By the time everything was packed in the wagon, there wasn't a whole lot of room for much else. That's why most families walked alongside the covered wagon. In addition to the oxen that pulled the wagon, some families brought other animals, such as horse, sheep, and cows. These families didn't go inside the covered wagons. Instead, they were tied to the wagons with rope and walked behind or beside the wagons. Why do you think families would want to bring animals like horses, sheep, and cows? Many of these families were headed to the Oregon Territory where they planned to settle to make new homes. So people traveling in the Oregon travel tra people traveling to the Oregon Territory traveled on the Oregon Trail. Back in the east it had become too expensive for settlers to be able to own their own land. They hoped that by settling west they might find a place to build their own homes. Others chose to go for the adventure of starting a new life. The road west was had been challenging already. The wagon train had been traveling for three long months. The settlers were forced 
where sellers were following a rough and or uneven trail of wagon ruts to the Oregon Trail. Again, those wagon ruts are like grooves left by other wagons in the ground. After many wagons followed one path, the ruts became so deep that it was very difficult or even impossible for the wagons to travel without getting stuck. As much of the Oregon Trail went through what was known as the Indian Territory, the travelers encountered Native American tribes along the way. Sometimes the Native Americans were fearful that the settlers would decide to stop traveling and just make farms right there on their land. So how did the Native Americans feel about settlers moving west? Yeah, they were kind of scared. On this particular day, the wagon train moved slowly in 100 degree heat. Thomas Lawrence, a settler and the wagon train scout, rode quickly over to the leader of the wagon train, Captain Jeremiah Ward, to report on the trail ahead. So a, a scout is a person who is sent ahead of the traveling group, and they gather, gather information of what lies ahead. Why do you think it was important to have a scout? Yeah, maybe to see any potential dangers or stuff like that. There's water a half mile ahead, but it's not fit for drinking, Mr. Lawrence reported. We ought to reach Sweet River by noon, though, and that water is safe. Captain Warren nodded in his thanks. Good work, Thomas. When the wagon reached the Sweetwater River, everyone enjoyed a long, cool drink. Captain Ward ordered, First we'll take the wagons and the oxen across the river. Then we'll swim the extra horses over. The cattle will go last. To lighten their loads for the crossing, families removed any heavy objects from their wagons. The settlers brought many of these items to have in their new homes to remind them of their homes back in the east. Now... Many of those items they'd hoped to have in their new homes just were left behind. Fortunately, everyone crossed safely. Once everyone was across and settled, they refilled the water barrels and canteens. They would need the fresh water for the next portion of their trip. Then they set up camp for the night. They made small campfires over which they cooked their food, bacon and beans. Less than an hour late after darkness fell, when most of the travelers were sleeping in their tents or wagons, the wind began to rise, whooshing across the plains. Thomas Lawrence, who was watching the cattle, could hear rumbling off in the distance. <laughs> Suddenly, a flash of lightning split the night sky. The next instant, a blinding rain fell on the sleeping pioneers. Then, out of nowhere, the wind blew so hard that half the tents blew over. Those who had been in the tents ran to their wagons, squeezing into any space they could find amid the furniture and supplies. Still, everyone was already soaking wet, and even tying, and even tying the canvas flat shut could not keep some rain from blowing in. Storms were really difficult um, during the Oregon Trail. Inside Lawrence's family's wagon, everyone huddled together, shivering. Nine-year-old Barbara said, Folks call these wagons prairie schooners, Mama, as if they were schooner ships sailing the wide open land instead of the sea. I didn't really think the schooner ships and our prairie schooner were that much alike, but with the wind rocking the wagon back and forth, I feel as if we really are at sea. Six-year-old Abby whispered, I wish we were home. How do you think Abigail feels? Uh, feels, and her family are feeling. At that moment, the canvas flap opened, and Thomas Lawrence joined his family inside the wagon. Abigail asked, Papa, why aren't you with the cattle? He explained, The first bolt lightning bolt spooked them so much that they ran off. We'll have to round them up after the storm. The lightning scared the cattle. Do you think the pioneers will find them? After a cold, miserable night, the morning dawned cool, dawned cool and gray. Abigail awoke to the sound of a bell. 
Peering out, she explained, Why, it's Snowbell! She's found her way back! Sure enough, the Lawrence's milk cow was standing outside the wagon, ready to be milked. Mr. Lawrence told his wife, Patricia, have one of the boys milk her. I have an idea. Mr. Lawrence trudged or walked heavily through the thick mud to Captain Ward's wagon. Captain Ward was already up helping others, people. Our milked cow came home, Mr. Lawrence reported. If we can follow her tracks, maybe we'll find some of the other animals. Captain Ward agreed, and so on horseback, Thomas Lawrence and some of the other men followed the cow's tracks back to where she had been, beyond the grove of trees. They found the missing animals, calmly chewing the wet prairie grass as if nothing had happened. Mr. Lawrence rode back to his wife near the family wagon and joked, Well, that was certainly fun, she replied. Let's hope we've seen the worst of the Oregon Trail. Do you think they have seen the last of their difficulties? We'll see. But two months later, the trail presented one last challenge to the pioneers. They were crossing the high mountains of the eastern part of the Oregon Territory on their way to the Green Valley beyond. That day, Captain Jeremiah Ward and Thomas Lawrence stood together and looked down at the steep mountain trail mountain trail ahead. The captain said, we have to take the steep path down. There's no other way. If we turn back to take the southern trail, we'd lose too much time. Then we'd never make it out of these mountains before the winter snow hits. Mr. Lawrence agreed. It is, only, it is the only way, but it will be difficult. When I scouted ahead, he said, I found that the fa the forest crowds too closely for a wagon to travel on either side of the trail. So we must take the trail itself. At least this extremely steep stretch is fairly short, only about 160 feet when the trail levels out and is in good condition again. Once we make it down the hill, the trail will be e much easier. Fortunately, Captain Ward had a plan. Tell everyone to unhitch their hot oxen from the front of the wagons and reconnect them to the back. We'll walk them with the, we'll walk with them on the paths on either side of the trail, and the oxen will be able to hold the weight of each wagon so that it doesn't slide down. After the wagons are down, our families can follow on foot. We'll bring the herds down last. Half an hour later, the first wagon started down the steep trail. Six oxen attached to the wagon by ropes or chains strained to keep the Lawrence's wagon under control on the bumpy, uneven surface. Watching from the top of the hill was Mrs. Lawrence and the children. As they watched the wagon descend, Mrs. Lawrence said, It will be a miracle if my china doesn't shatter into pieces with all the bouncing and banging. After what seemed like a lifetime, they came there came a cry at the bottom of the incline. We're down, and everything's in one piece. Everyone cheered, and Captain Ward ordered the men to move the rest of the wagons. By the end of the day, everyone had made it down to the bottom. That night, camping beside a clean, flowing stream, Captain Ward announced, Tomorrow, we'll be out of these mountains, and then we're almost home. Ten days later, Captain Ward led his wagon train out of the forest and into a lush green valley spread out as far as the eye could see. As each wagon emerged from the trees, and when each family saw the valley ahead, everyone fell silent. This was the place that the travelers had dreamed about and worked to reach through six months of hardship or difficulties and laughter, rain and hail, wind and heat. So why did some families decide to pack all of their belongings in a covered wagon and head out west? Why do you think families traveled in wagon trains with a scout riding ahead of them rather than, than traveling by themselves? Remember, we had to focus on the main topic. So what was the main topic of this read aloud? If you could think of one sentence to describe what happened, what do you think? Yeah, this read aloud was mostly about the way people traveled on the Oregon Trail. 
Our word work word is the word territory. I'll read the word. You repeat it after me. Territory. Again, territory means a region or a land, area of land. So the Louisiana Territory later became known as became the states of Colorado, Arkansas, and Montana, to name a few. Again, we learned about uh, the Oregon Trail. Again, lots of people were traveling along the Oregon Trail, heading out west, um, right at, during this time period right here, be, right after the Trail of Tears, and all the way up to 1850, they were traveling out west on that trail.